hey guys you're watching marilyn bruce channel welcome back to my channel let's get straight into today's tutorial these are the materials that you're going to need you're going to need a bobby net or a corset mesh so this is the material that is used to make corset you're also going to need a chantilly lace this is also one of the materials that aid to make a transparent corset you need a ridgeling bone or a stitchable bone so as you can see you also need um, a plastic bone so I'm sure you've seen this in the market before you're also going to need your cotton bias for making the boning channels so you can use whatever inch you want depending on the size of your bone yeah you're also going to need your breast cap so you can use whatever type of breast cap that you want so this is what I thought I was be, I'll be using initially but I changed my mind and I used a different type you're going to see it as we proceed you're also going to need your lace okay so it can be a beaded lace or a normal lace whatever lace that you choose depends on you yeah so let's get straight into our drafting process first off i use 25 inches as my top length and this is basically because of the style my clients chose so we're creating something with a very deep back shape so this is per my client's measurement so you can use whatever measurements you want so first off 25 inches for the length and then you're going to mark the other measurements which is the bust measurement your under bust measurement and then the waist measurement so that's the lines that i have ruled so the, the second line the first line is the shoulder line the second line is the bust line the third line is the under bust line and then the fourth line is the waist line and then the very last hem which i didn't label is the top length okay so that is the style that um actually showing on the screen so it's a gown that i was making for a client but i just want to go through the corset part which is the transparent corset part with you guys here i'm just drafting the normal basic bodies block you should know how to draft that by now if not you can just let me know in the comment section and i'm going to make a separate video on that but you can still watch what i'm doing and you understand it's pretty much simple and very easy to comprehend so um what i'm doing now is i'm extending the shoulder line because it has a drop shoulder so i extended it by 3.5 inches and i'm just going to drop that line down to connect my armhole okay and because we don't want to have any pointy edges i just took out one and a half inches from the corner okay so now let's move to uh that part you're going to measure your client or yourself or whatever measurement you're using mine was eight inches the nipple to nipple or apex to apex was eight inches so i just marked that down and i square the line down to the hem because that's what i'm going to be using okay after that i needed to draw the neckline of the main corset because this corset is going to have a yoke as well then after i measured the midpoint of the shoulder and then i connected that to the bust line okay and i took out one inch from each side to create my dart then i connected that to the hand which is a drop shoulder so if you pretty much watch what i'm doing you're going to understand this is a little advanced not so much advanced but if you're a beginner beginner you wouldn't understand what i'm doing so you can just watch and learn so after i moved on to the under bus trying to take my dad i took one inch from the inner part which is the center center front and i took one and a half inch from the side front okay to create a more defined bust bust shape sorry so after i'm creating my caps to form the cap of the center front and then the side front and always don't forget to label your pattern so you don't get confused along the line yeah so next off i'm just going to transfer down the horizontal measurements onto the pattern so mine was nine and then i added 
my dot which was two inches i did the same thing for the weight the weight was 30 inches so 30 divided by 4 is 7.5 and then i'm going to add my 2.5 and then you're just going to connect those lines down so time for me to draw out my back shape as well so this i decided to go down by five inches so you can go down by four by three by any um measurement you want depending on the shape or how deep you want your bags to look yeah so i use five inches and you're going to connect that to the waist but with this with this design it doesn't connect to the waist so i measured the hip measurement and i added two inches allowance and i connected that to the waist point or the waistline i came down by 2.5 inches and i connected it to that deep v um center at the center front if that makes sense okay so you can go ahead and do whatever you want at this point so here i'm coming in by half inches on the center front this also aids or helps in the snatching process okay so it's just a little dot that i'm taking off from the center front to avoid any bulk or any excess if that makes sense okay so making a corset is all about taking out darts from your pattern to snatch your body snatch your waist snatch the upper part of your your dress yes so if you are able to take out those darts perfectly you are good to go so that is what i'm doing and you're not supposed to take too much if you take too much your clients won't be able to breathe or you won't be able to breathe yourself so you just take a good amount of darts so you can be comfortable but at the same time look snatched so let's move to the back part of the pattern so just as the same process for the front you're going to repeat the same thing so the line i just ruled is the center back i didn't want to start from the edge of the brown paper so i just quit an, a random line to form a center back so i just measured the across front which was 14 14 divided by two is seven i mark that seven down and i'm just creating that armhole you should know how to do this by now if not i will try and make another tutorial on how to create the normal basic bodies block okay so just like i said this design has the um what do you call it the drop shoulder okay so that is what i'm creating the same thing for the front you have to make sure you create the same thing for the back so that when it's time to join your your fabric together everything meets perfectly nice and neat yeah so this is me here again with the illustration referencing um the back so i can get the um drafting correctly okay so that's the illustration and i'm just dropping the back a little bit down because that's what the illustration says that's what the client wanted so that's what i'm doing exactly yeah so if you watch what i'm doing you're going to understand so like i said the main purpose of this um video tutorial is to um demonstrate or show you guys how to um stitch the transparent corset okay so my style might be different from what he may be looking for but it's the same process okay the same process of stitching so you can just watch what i'm doing and you can apply that to yours when it's time for you to draft yours when it comes to drafting the bag it's usually easy peasy the bag is mostly the easiest part when it comes to pattern drafting so i just marked four inches from the center back and then i measured six inches upwards and then five inches downwards and i'm just connecting to create my that okay then after that i'm just going to transfer my horizontal measurement so you do that and then you're going to measure your waist uh, measurement as well you're going to transfer the waist measurement as well sorry and then you're going to add a dot so whatever you did to the front you have to make sure you get the same shape for the back 
but the front had the back shape but the, the back is not going to have that same shape the back is usually going to be straight but because of the waistline of the front was dropped by two inches you have to make sure to do the same thing to the back so here i just took out half inches from the center back okay i took that out because i want to avoid or create bulginess when it comes to um, fixing the zip okay yeah so like i said whatever you do for the front you have to make sure to do the same thing for the back so you can see me comparing i dropped the waistline of the front by 2.5 inches so i have to make sure i do the same thing for the back so that when it comes to joining the fabrics together they will meet okay so the back is going to be a normal straight waistline whereas the front is going to have that back shape okay hope it makes sense so if you have watched till this point you should understand or get to where we are going so here i'm just highlighting um the parts that i'm going to be cutting off so that i don't get confused when i get somewhere so yeah So I folded the darts before cutting the pattern. This is to ensure that there is no excess or shortage when it comes to joining the center front to the side front patterns together. It's now time for me to cut the patterns on the fabric. So first off is the bobby net. Okay, so as you can see, I'm just using my armhole curve to straighten that out. You can iron that if you want. Okay, so I'm just going to cut off all the pieces on this before I move them to the next fabric. So you just watch what I'm doing and you do the same thing when it's time for you to cut. So the allowance that I'll be using for this particular project is half inch. The next fabric to cut is a chantilly lace. 
and here if you can see i'm just trying to check if it has any stretch luckily for me it doesn't have any stretch okay so i'm good to go i can go ahead and then cut my patterns if the fabric you're using happens to be stretchy then it means that you have to stabilize that fabric how do you stabilize the fabric you are going to laminate it by infusing um hemming stiff in between the bobby net and then the lace i hope this makes sense i will try and make a tutorial on how to laminate your fabric in order to make it stable After cutting both the bobbinet and chantilly lace, next thing to do is to join them together, okay? Make them as one. So that is what I'm doing. This part can be very, very annoying because the fabric is very soft, very delicate. So you have to be very patient when you get to this part, okay? You have to be patient and gentle. It's time to stitch. So at this point, if you chose to laminate your fabric, you can now start creating your boning channels. But I decide to um, join the the bobby net and then the chantilly lace together by basting. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm just going to run a basting stitch all over the edge of all the sides of the patterns together.
Out of joining your bobbinet and your chantilly lace together, making them as one piece, it's now time for you to create your boning channels. And with this, I'm going to be using the French seam. I'll be using the French seam because this secures the seam lines very well. If you work with bobbinet a lot, you realize that it frills a lot, and you don't want your client coming back to you telling you that the seams have gone off or her dress is coming apart okay so i assure you guys that french seam is the best seam to use when you're working with bobbinet okay so first off you're just going to join the front sides together okay so um what i mean is your wrong sides are going to face each other and you're going to sew the right side so that's the first step so after you sew the um the correct side you are going to turn it you are going to flip it over and then stitch again so here i'm just stitching using like a quarter inch seam allowance okay so you just watch what i'm doing and you're going to understand it's very simple like i said so after you are done you can just go ahead and press this but as you know when i'm seated behind the machine i don't like getting up so i just went ahead and used my arms to press them and went ahead and pinned them down together if you are not an expert don't try this method <laughs> it won't work okay so you can just go ahead and then press this down to get a more defined or accurate line okay so after you are done you're just going to pin as i'm doing and then you're going to stitch at the wrong side french seams are very easy to make so if you don't understand what i'm doing now you can watch other videos you can read on it and you understand how a french seam is made but basically this is the seam you are going to be sewing throughout the entire channels on your corset okay because it's a bobby net bobby net frills a lot when i started using bobby net at first i didn't know this i just used the normal stitching method and the first dress i made ended up you know coming off it happened to me twice and i realized that um bobby nets shouldn't be treated that way i don't know if you have also experienced that before but you can share your experiences with me and we can all learn from it yeah so this is the seams that i use and it works for me perfectly your seam will stay strong and nothing is going to destroy it okay yeah so you can see as i'm done stitching i'm just trying to check to see if there are any loopholes or damages or anything but it's as strong as the word strong okay so trust me guys if you work with bobby net a lot you're going to realize what i'm saying is true and this is the best way to go about it okay french seams for the win if you have any method you use that works for you perfectly you can feel free to share that in the comment section we are all here to learn and i'm open to learning new things so let me go over once again with the french seam your wrong side facing each other so the right side of the fabric is going to face up okay so you are going to stitch the right side of your fabric so here the right side of my fabric is the chantilly lace and the wrong side is the bobbinet okay so the bobbinet is going to face each other you're going to stitch that using a quarter inch seam allowance okay you don't have to stitch it so small but it should be small okay so after you are done stitching you are going to flip it to the other side and then you are going to stitch again using another quarter or half yes
I'm done joining all my seams together, both fronts and back. Now it's time for me to create my boning channels. And I'm going to be using the cotton bias to create these channels. So I used one inch cotton bias because I realized that using the half inch, by the time you are done stitching both sides, the bone can enter. Okay, so I went ahead to use one inch. So with the one inch, I just folded it into two and after I'm done stitching both sides, the space left is enough to accommodate my bone. Yeah, so you can use whatever um, bias you want. You can also create your own bias. I'm done creating the channels. Next is for me to insert my bone. So the boning I'll be using is plastic bone. So when you decide to use a plastic bone, you have to secure the edges so that the bone doesn't poke or break the fabric to harm your client or yourself if the, the garment belongs to you. Okay, so you can either file the bone or you can use a source of heat like fire to um, burn the edges out okay to get rid of the pointy edges After inserting the bone into all the channels, next up is for me to fix my bra cap. So I'm using this normal push-up bra cap that I got from a store in Accra. Okay, so this cost I think 10 CD or 12 CD. I don't remember. And this is the cap that I'll be using. So you're going to find the center point of the bust, the bust point and you're going to um, fix that. You have to make sure it's accurate. 
so that when your client comes and she's fitting is going to her her boobs or her breast is going to sit perfectly in there so that's what i'm doing i'm just trying to adjust it so it can sit perfectly on the corset upon editing my videos at this point i realized i had lost majority of my clips the yoke part of this video was missing the hem and then how to fix the zip or the eyelids was also missing so i'm going to make another separate tutorial teaching you guys how to do this i'm so sorry guys After I'm just stitching the breast cap onto the corset part so that it can sit at its rightful place without shifting or moving. Okay, so I'm just going to hand stitch this all around so it stays in its perfect place. So here is my client's first fitting and as you can see, everything looks okay but there were some little adjustments that were supposed to be made and this is why fitting is always important okay guys you always have to let your clients come in for fitting so that you can make adjustments and corrections and everything that needs to be done before the final detailing is done so this is where we had made all the corrections and everything looking perfect so that's my client on her wedding day and she was so happy the dress fitted her like a glove and everything was nice and neat and just as she wanted in the style inspiration this brings us to the end of today's tutorial thank you for watching don't forget to like share and subscribe bye